Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at dev containers. This is a new feature being added with Rails 8. You can see here in the current milestone list, somewhere in here, there is a generate dev containers by default. And if we pop into here, it says it makes it easier for users to set up their development environment for Rails applications. If you come over to containers.dev, you can then see sort of what these are. I'm going to just simplify this a bit. Effectively, it allows you to run your own version of a computer, but that computer comes pre-installed with Ruby, with Rails, and with the extensions and the other tools you need to be able to work on that Rails project. In the case of the default one, which I have open over here, there's no real VS Code extensions configured yet, except for if we come over to the side and I minimize the local ones and I minimize the recommended ones, ESLint, GitHub Copilot, and Ruby LSP. This is the Shopify language server. So this uh, set of four right here comes included out of the box. I'll show you how to add more so that if you want to, you can create your own custom environments that you can then share with people or that you can just reuse. Now, the initial creation of one of these dev containers does require you to have Rails installed on your machine. So if I come in here and I do Rails-V, you can see I do currently have Rails installed, but the idea here is that I don't need to have Rails installed to be able to run these. The only thing you need is Docker, which we're gonna be using the Docker desktop CLI on Windows. And because we're doing this on Windows, we're also going to want to have WSL setup. So if you come over to the little cog wheel here, you can see on the side that I have this set up to use the WSL2 based engine. That's the Windows subsystem for Linux based engine, which gives you better performance than Hyper-V. And it also allows you to use your little Linux terminals over here if you want to. You can see over here I have, you know, Ubuntu 20.04 and 22.04, as well as PowerShell and a bunch of other stuff. And I can just swap between those as I need to. So I would go look up a WSL tutorial if you don't have that set up already, and then make sure you have the Docker desktop client set up. The last thing you want to do is just right click on your little whale here and your icon if you have it and make sure that you are set to switch to windows containers which means you're currently running this for linux containers uh, because this one can also do windows containers i can only hope you never have to do that but we're going to set that aside so we have a little demo project here but i want to show you sort of how you get access to this currently in the future, it's gonna be a lot easier. Right now, if we just do a Rails new video, we're gonna pass dash dash main, and that's gonna build a Rails project through the main branch. And you can see here, it says command not found Rails. So assuming you run this command, you'll get something similar to what I have here in the demo, which is the current state of the main branch as of the recording of this video. But what I think would be good to do is if we come in here, we can actually because we only have the video or the demo here, we can make dir a video project. Now we have a video directory and a demo directory. I'm gonna cp-r the demo slash dot dev container. And I'm gonna put this into video. And then we're gonna go to slash dot dev container like that. Then we're gonna cd into video and then we can ll in here and we can cd into dot dev container, I guess. And then in here, you can see we have just those three files. Again, if I run a Rails-V here, I don't have Rails set up. This is the only way I could think, well, the easiest way I could think of to show you how this works uh, and prove to you that I don't have Rails set up when I do this. So we're gonna come over to here and we're gonna have just these three files. Pretend that we've like cloned these from, I don't know, the internet or something. I'm gonna create a new folder or actually, I'm gonna CD out of the dev container and I'll run the code dot inside the video project. because so I wanna emulate what it looks like in a Rails 8 app right now. There we go. So we just have a dev container folder here. If you come over to your extensions, you can install the dev container extension. You can see right here, dev container. Install this Microsoft one and then click reopen in container once you have the option to. That's then going to step through and try to rebuild this dev container here, which is included with Rails 8 by default. And it's going to set up a Rails environment for us. The nice thing about this is we effectively have the ability now to create a Rails app without installing Rails on our system. Because again, Rails-V isn't working for me. I don't need it to work for me. The only thing I need to do is make sure that I can start a container 
from this stuff over here. Now, this isn't going to work for me right here uh, because Docker is currently at war with me. But I have this one over here, which is currently running the Rails server. So this is our original. So when you run your Rails new uh, video dash dash main, you'll get something like this as your new starter point for Rails 7 or Rails 8. Sorry. So I'm going to CD out of here and CD into demo, which is that project that we're in right now. Now in here, we have a couple of extensions provided by default. We have ESLint, we have GitHub Copilot, GitHub Copilot, Ruby LSP. But what happens if I want to add another one? Like what if I want to add the stimulus LSP, right? This is the one created by Marco Roth. So if we want to do that, we can come over here we can click on this. Instead of clicking install, because we don't want to just add it to this dev container, we want to add it to our container file so other people know that this is what we're using. We can actually right click on this and click add to dev container.json. You can see it creates a customizations block for us. So that's pretty cool. Now it tells us, hey, do you want to rebuild the container? So we click on rebuild and we hope that Docker doesn't decide to ruin my day again. So if we come over here, let's stop this. Let's come into our terminal again. We can CD into demo and run a code dot to open this up again and make sure the Docker is actually working for us here instead of working against us like it seems to be doing right now. Uh, but we can do this. We can move this over to the side. It'll tell us, do you want to open this up in your dev container again, which hopefully that'll pop up in a second here. And then once we've gotten to that point where it detects this dev container.json, it should say, all right, I'm setting this up for you. And then we can reopen this in a container. This, this startup process does get faster for subsequent reopens, which is nice. The only downside is uh, it is still a little bit slower. It's a lot slower than just running a code dot on your local system, of course. But okay, how do we make sure? But okay, how do we make sure that we're running this in, in the container and we can actually run these commands now? Well, if we come over to extensions, let's just verify we're still in our dev container. If we hit control shift tilde, we get a terminal here. We should ideally have one open. If we run a Rails-V, you should see this one doesn't kick back any information. If I come over here and I run a Rails-V, you can see this one kicks back Rails 7.2.alpha, right? So how do we do stuff? Well, let's say we have bin slash Rails uh, and we do dash V here. You can see this one is 7.2.alpha, uh, right? So now if I do a bin slash rails g scaffold post with a title and a body of type text, you'll see that this runs just fine in our container. There's also some additional nice stuff that runs here where it inspects the files, makes sure there's no offenses detected. So we're getting some additional features here, which is pretty cool. So now let's do a bin slash rails db colon migrate to migrate our database. And again, this will persist because of how it's set up. That's pretty cool. Let's come ahead. Let's come in here now and let's do a bin slash rails s to start our server. You can see this starts our server, but now we run into a different problem. If I come over here and I try and go to localhost port 3000, that one's going to time out. Instead, if we click on open browser, we can see this actually goes to 127.0.0.1 port 3001 in this case. So we have 3001 over here. And then if we come over to our slash posts, you can see we have the post right here. We click on new post, test and case, create the post. We can stop our server. We can start our server and come over here. We can refresh our server is still here. And of course, if we need to do anything, it'll continue to be here because on our actual machine here, we have the storage, right? So we can LL our storage. And in here we have our development SQLite. So this will persist. Even if we shut this down, we still have our, oops, our containers over here in our storage. So that's sort of how you use them. You, you just come in here, you run a code dot as needed. You have all of your stuff persisted. And then in your terminal inside of the uh, actual you know, container itself, you run bin slash whatever as your commands, as opposed to just running your commands, like your Rails commands. Now, if you want to add some kind of alias for that, you're always welcome to do that. It really depends on how your container uh, how your containers are set up. So maybe you don't like having to run bin slash dev and you just don't want to do it when you're developing locally for whatever you're doing. Uh, of course, you know, other people are going to have opinions based on how uh, they do their own development. But in this case, you can just come over and wherever you have like your Docker file, for example, where you do your apt update, whatever, uh, at some point, what you want to do is just make sure that you have your run echo alias rails is equal to bin slash rails put that into your bash RC or your ZSHRC or whatever you want to do. 
And then this would allow you to, uh, I believe, skip that step. For me personally, I'm fine with just typing bin slash whatever. It's not that big of a deal. I don't run that many Rails commands to begin with. Uh, but I know when you're starting out, you can be running those 24 seven as you try and get used to all the generators and stuff because that's where the bulk of your work is. So in that case, maybe you want to uh, switch that around. But yeah, this you're ultimately going to get out of this whatever whatever you know you personally think it's useful for. In my case, I think it's very useful just to have something that I can point to, like in this case, these uh, dot oops the dot dev container file, uh, because then in future videos, if this is included, people can just you know clone the repo, pop into that dev container. And then they can run the app from there and they can also look at the extensions that I used in the video and it allows them to look at the entire environment in an isolated snapshot so it'll work for them and I don't have to, you know, deal with people having different versions of systems and, you know, downloads and stuff not working, hopefully. So in that case, it'll allow a lot more uniformity in future videos and it's a lot easier for you to just pop in and check, hey, how did this guy get this type of autocomplete in his VS code? But anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful or at least insightful in sort of the direction that Rails seems to be going in with the Rails 8 milestones. Again, if you ever want to check these out, you can go over to github.com slash rails slash rails slash milestone. And you can look at, I guess for this one, milestone 87. But in the future, you'll have different, uh, different milestones. So you can come over to slash milestones, for example. Uh, and then you can take a look at these and just see sort of what, what they're up to and what their plans are. But yeah, that's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching and hopefully I will see you in the next one.